Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. The nation collectively remembered the victims of 9-11 yesterday, holding memorials in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. What was left out of those memorials, perhaps rightfully so, and but what needs to be talked about in America moving forward is what our nation has given up in the 10 years since 9-11 because of our misguided wars. The National Priorities Project estimates our nation has spent over $1.2 trillion in Afghanistan and Iraq over the last decade. And according to the Washington Post, by the time these wars wind down, if they ever do, we'll have spent at least $3 trillion. Over the weekend, the Center for American Progress examined what ways we could have spent that money besides dropping bombs on the Middle East and killing or displacing millions of people, including over 6,000 American soldiers, and the numbers are shocking. With our war money, we could have instead given 59 million children health insurance every year for 10 years. Or we could have sent 63 million people to college for free every year for 10 years. Or we could have hired 1.6 million elementary school teachers every year for 10 years. Or we could have upgraded 26 million homes with solar panels every year for 10 years. Any one of those alternatives would have made our nation far wealthier and safer than the endless wars that George W. Bush opted for in the wake of 9-11. So let's hope this anniversary, the 10th one, will be more than just about remembering the victims, but it'll also be about correcting the course. With the wars, the Islamophobia, the massive security state, and an economy faltering under the weight of war and bankster crimes, the United States is on a road to ruin, which is exactly what bin Laden hoped for. After 10 years, it's time to ditch Bush's 9-11 roadmap of endless war and begin a genuine recovery. Our nation's infrastructure is crumbling. The Sherman Minton Bridge that spans the Ohio River in Louisville, Kentucky, was shut down last Friday due to safety concerns after cracks were discovered in the bridge's load-bearing parts. The Sherman Minton Bridge is just one of several bridge bridges in danger of collapsing. As the American Society of Civil Engineers points out, 34% of all the bridges in Kentucky are considered structurally deficient. Of course, Kentucky is the home state of Republican Senator Mi and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who opposed increased infrastructure spending in the 2009 stimulus bill, opposed it again when Republicans blocked a jobs bill in 2010, and threw cold water last week on President Obama's Americans Job Act, Jobs Act that includes billions in transportation infrastructure projects. According to a study by the Urban Land Institute, our nation's infrastructure needs $2 trillion worth of repairs, and America's infrastructure now ranks 16th in the world, according to the World Economic Forum. Yet another consequence of 30 years of Ronald Reagan's starved the beast economics. In the best of the rest of the news, an explosion ripped through a French nuclear power plant today, killing one person and injuring three others. So far, the French authority claims no radioactivity material or radioactive material has been released into the atmosphere. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, to Japan's nuclear crisis, there are more myth mistruths coming from TEPCO. Turns out the corporation that runs the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan once again underestimated just how much radiation leaked out of that plant during the nuclear crisis that is still ongoing more than six months after the devastating earthquake and tsunami that triggered it. Early estimates by TEPCO put the amount of radiation seeping to the seawater around Fukushima at around 4,700 trillion becquerels. But according to the Japan Atomic Energy Agency, the number is actually closer to 15 trillion becquerels. Just to put how damaging 15,000 trillion becquerels of contamination is, government regulations ban the shipment of food that contains more than 500 becquerels of radiation. Again, we're talking 15,000 trillion becquerels. Clearly, this is still an environmental disaster on a tragically epic scale. President Obama will submit his American Jobs Act to Congress today, though most Republicans will likely be focused instead on the sideshow tonight, known as the CNN Tea Party Republican debate instead of jobs. Expect more of the same Obama bashing, global warming denying, death penalty cheering, and social security lying that have come to characterize Republican debates so far. During President Obama's job speech last week, Republican Congressman Jeff Landry from Louisiana held up a drilling equals jobs sign in the House chamber. Despite the obvious disrespect of holding up a sign while the president addressed a joint session of Congress, it's also clear Landry doesn't know what he's talking about. According to a new report from Democrats in the House National Resources Committee, giant oil corporations that are obsessed with drilling are actually killing American jobs. 
Over the last five years, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, and BP made $546 billion in profits, yet laid more off more than 11,000 American workers. So the question is, why are we giving these oil barons tens of billions of dollars in taxpayer-paid corporate welfare? Not only are they not hiring people with the handouts, but they're making a fortune keeping gasoline well above $3.50 in the U.S. by exporting much of their domestic refinery production. Americans love football, which means they also love socialism. The NFL season kicked off this weekend, and as Think Progress pointed out, Americans flocked to their TV to watch just how successful progressive policies in action can be. Over the years, the NFL has ad adopted a series of socialist rules to ensure that the sport remains enjoyable for it to its fans and stays open for business. Among these include revenue sharing. Uh, they as well have an affirmative action program, salary caps, and so on. And that's the way it is today, Monday, September 12th, 2011. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.